So this is the Surface Pro 11 and it might not look like it from the outside, but it has been such a different experience from the Surface Pro 9 that I got back in 2022. Different in some very good ways, but also different in a few frustrating ways. So what's actually new? Well, you now have the option for an OLED screen. There's a fancy new keyboard attachment that can be used wirelessly. And the most impactful change, it now exclusively features an ARM-based Qualcomm Snapdragon X Plus or Elite processor. So the configuration I've been using comes in at $14.99 for the Surface Pro 11 with the X Elite OLED display, 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage, which Microsoft makes extremely easy to upgrade on your own. Tack on another $279 for the Surface Pro keyboard with the Slim Pen. If you want to get the new Flex keyboard plus Slim Pen combo, that's going to set you back a whopping $450. So yeah, not exactly cheap. Now, the option for OLED is great and in general, a very solid display. Definitely a nice visual upgrade over the LCD on my Pro 9. The higher peak brightness, improved contrast, punchier colors and inky blacks just look really good, especially when used in a dark room. A hidden benefit of the OLED panel is that the touch response feels much better too. I've always felt like app windows would stutter behind my fingertips when moving them around on the old model, but on here, it pretty much sticks to my finger, making for a way better tablet experience. The screen does have a slight grain to it, especially on white or gray backgrounds. Not so noticeable when used at laptop distance, but as a tablet, you'll likely see it. It's a brighter display with 600 nits of full screen brightness compared to 450 on the Pro 9. While at my desk, I can comfortably use this at 50% brightness, whereas I found myself setting the Pro 9 to around 70 or 80%. 600 nits is probably the lower end of what you can get away with for true outdoor usage, but that's not the reason why I don't love this when I'm out and about. It's actually the reflections. The screen is still very reflective, especially when I'm using a dark theme, which I like to have on all the time. I love a fingerprint scanner as well, but the face unlock does work really well, even in low light. So this is not the Surface Pro Flex keyboard with wireless capabilities. This is the regular Surface Pro keyboard plus slim pen combo. It's backlit. I appreciate the dedicated spot for storing plus charging the pen. And the trackpad is a little small, but works really well. The ability to angle it up slightly also adds to the typing experience. The Alcantara material adds a unique touch. I actually like it, but there are drawbacks. My two-year-old Surface Pro 9 keyboard has these like dark stains near the palm rest here. I swear to you, I'm not a dirty person. And I've also accidentally spilled a few drops of water near the, the pen holder, and it kind of just bubbled up permanently. But yeah, other than that, it's held up pretty well. Even though they call this a two-in-one laptop, it's never been a device that I can comfortably use on my lap. This needs to be on a table of some sort. The magic behind this form factor is that you can go from laptop to tablet whenever you want. Windows 11 is nowhere near as intuitive or touch-friendly as Android or iPad OS, but it gets the job done. The only visual change to the UI is a more touch-friendly taskbar. Otherwise, you're just using Windows 11 with your fingers. For content consumption, occasional emails, web browsing, or note-taking, the Surface Pro's tablet experience is perfectly fine. I'm glad they finally addressed the sluggish auto-rotation. It's much quicker now, but I wish scrolling with my fingers was a little less jittery. It does weigh close to two pounds, so it's a little heavier compared to an iPad Pro or a Galaxy Tab of similar size. But yeah, the built-in kickstand, OLED panel, and great sounding front-facing speakers makes this great for watching stuff. Now, the Surface Slim Pen 2 doesn't get as much love as the Apple Pencil or S Pen from Samsung, but I've always enjoyed it. It's surprisingly comfortable to hold, and it has a tiny bit more latency, but still feels very responsive. I love the subtle haptics that you can make stronger or turn off completely. The side button simulates a right click, and the top button can be customized to quickly open different apps based on a click, double click, or click and hold. Oh, and it also doubles as an eraser, which is kind of cool. The big story around these devices is that Microsoft is completely embracing ARM processors. The Snapdragon X Elite version that I've been testing has been a bit of a mixed bag. Let's start with the good. First of all, day-to-day -day performance is amazing. This is probably the smoothest, most responsive Windows device I've used. 
Even with simple things like opening the start menu or using the search button, there's a slight delay on the Pro 9, but on the new one, it's instant. There's also no excessive heat or random fan noises. Outside of video editing, I think I've only felt it get slightly warm while charging. Okay, so I did a whole bunch of battery testing and to summarize, the better life is directly tied to which power mode you use. Keep in mind, I'm doing the same type of work. The only thing I'm changing is the power mode. Recommended is going to get you the best battery life with best performance being the worst. So yeah, leave it on recommended for day-to-day -day productivity. 10 hours is not groundbreaking, but coming from a Surface Pro 9 where I'd be lucky to get six, it's a really nice jump. The standby battery drain is also very good for a Windows laptop. I put it to sleep at 9 p.m. and 12 hours later at 9 a.m., it only lost like 3% battery. Now, when it comes to AI capabilities, I haven't tried everything, but I actually found myself using Copilot, Microsoft's AI assistant, way more because of the dedicated shortcut on the keyboard. My Google search usage has actually gone down because I'm using Copilot for general searches. It's also been awesome for brainstorming, drafting text, and the image creation stuff is pretty powerful too. I'm really digging the AI assisted studio effects on the webcam. It's a nice touch and will be great for anyone who takes a lot of video calls. The webcam quality ain't too shabby either. Now let's talk about the not so great stuff. If you care about gaming, even casually, this is probably not for you. It says a lot when even Xbox, an app that Microsoft owns, doesn't support game installation. You can only do cloud gaming. Video editing performance was also underwhelming. It got a little better on best performance setting, but there were still way too many hiccups and slowdowns for me to even consider using this for any serious project. I will say, the current ARM-supported version of DaVinci Resolve is still in public beta, so here's hoping it gets better. For photo editing, I've been using Affinity Photo for years on the iPad, and I was super happy to see that they have native ARM support. It works perfectly on the Pro 11, whether I was using a mouse or via touch in tablet mode. Compatibility is a big concern with the switch to ARM. Even with the ability to emulate, there's still going to be apps that just don't work. I feel like I have a fairly simple workflow and even I'm running into some issues. For example, I like to use my Galaxy Tab as a second display from time to time. I use an app called Super Display because it allows for a wired connection. Unfortunately, I can't get Super Display to install. Another app I always install on my Windows PC is Google's Quick Share, which lets you send files wirelessly from any Android device to the PC. The app does not support ARM devices. These things will likely be resolved over time, and it's not Microsoft's fault per se, as it's up to the developer, but when you spend this kind of money on a laptop, you kind of want and expect everything to run. Qualcomm actually has a fairly detailed list online with the apps that have need of support, so that'd be a good place to start your research. Despite the setbacks, I still really like the Surface Pro 11. It's definitely not going to be a good fit for everyone due to the potential compatibility issues, but it's also perfect for everyday productivity like note taking, video calls, web browser use, and Microsoft Office. The OLED display makes this a much better media device, but if you're okay with LCD, I think the $999 base model with the Snapdragon X Plus is going to be the better value. It's not like this higher end X Elite model is viable for gaming or video editing anyways. But yeah, a tablet laptop hybrid like this with a full desktop OS that runs silently, has pen support, snappy performance, decent battery life, is something a lot of people have been waiting for. Anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. As usual, thank you so much for watching. Until the next one, I'm out of here. Bye!